How close should you let a potential attacker get? We've got some police footage right here of a man who reaches for a knife and goes after a cop. And he could have seriously injured the officer. But if you're letting people get too close to you, you could be in serious trouble. We'll break down this video with noted criminal defense attorney and former state prosecutor Tom Grieve. But before that, let me remind you, we have a gun giveaway going on right now. You can enter for free, but it ends really soon. So just click the link in the description below to reveal which brand new gun you could win. All right, Tom, we're going to we've we've scrolled to the right portion of this video. And as we look at this, we see officers, a group of officers encountering a man and down below. And let's see if I can move the uh, right there. We have a knife on the ground. Borderline machete. Yeah, it's it's a good size knife. And and, we, you know, I've always been taught to have that discussion, you know, hey, I see the knife there. Don't reach for the knife. We don't want to do anything stupid. We can just solve this right now. And, and we're going to talk our way through this and, and get the guy to get compliance, uh, you know, rather than have to go hands on. And in this case, rather than have to go to guns, because you're going to see what this guy does. And I'm thinking that we're at least 15 to 18 feet away. But I'm looking at this officer here and he's really kind of casual before his whole life is about to change. Watch what happens and watch how quickly it happens. He's got his hands out and up. And he decides right now he's looking at the weapon. I'm grabbing it and I'm coming after the cop. Now you see that cop lean away. We're, we're going to see it in slow motion here. This is how quickly it happens. And the cop stops and looks like he's got his gun out, so he's probably not injured so badly that he can't grab his firearm, but everybody else is already engaged with this guy from over there. And that was just a couple of seconds. And you see how quickly this can happen. So from a self-defense standpoint, when we're dealing with our responsibly armed citizens, at what point and how can we legally keep people at bay, keep them at distance? How do we tell them to stay back? Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> stay back. <laughs> Hands out. And, and back. if yeah. we are having a position where we have, we retain mobility, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, we're not holding the hands of three toddlers or something like that. We can't really move around because obviously that totally changes it. We can't yep. back away at that point. Um, and we have to be mindful of what's our reactionary gap, right? Um, how close is too close? As uh, Dennis Tuller once commented back in a SWAT uh, magazine article in 1983, how close is too close? If the bad guy grabs the knife or produces a, an edge weapon and rushes me, um, What's my time to draw? And as a result, how far uh, out is, does somebody become a deadly yeah. threat? Obviously, we were well within that reactionary gap here. Mm -hmm. This officer that we're seeing the body cam for, the one who was almost chopped, um, he did some very fast backpedaling. And, and didn't get his firearm out until this point, until right. the guys already passed him and down alongside the van. Right, and he was lucky that he had three, four, five other officers there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if this is a one-on-one -on -one traffic encounter, um, I'm not sure this ends the same way. Yeah, and and it's different for the, the responsibly armed private citizen because you're not standing around trying to take this person into custody. Right. And, and I will tell people all the time, you get a situation like that, hey, back out of it. Just, Great contact. Yep, see, Yep, you can have your knife. See you later. I got something else to do. Yep. And don't turn your back on the knife. Nope. Walk away backwards. But start putting some space in there because it's not your job to, you know, even even if this guy is burglarizing your house and you decide you want to hold him for police, if he wants to go somewhere, let him go. Um, there's no reason to escalate it to a, a deadly force incident like that. And we've also seen just, you know, another recent jury trial, the, dry, the trial of the McMichaels uh, mm -hmm. and regarding the, the homicide of, uh, well, now we can say homicide, yeah. of Mr. Ahmad Arbery. Juries are not going to smile on people who use deadly force and had an opportunity to de-escalate or to leave the situation yeah. rather than people who arguably caused the situation. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I mean, if I've seen somebody with a knife on the side, you know, on going on one side of the road, I'm backing up fast. 
Yeah. And I'm going down the other side of the road, more than likely, my plans just changed. Yep. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out how do I break contact while keeping an eye on him as much as possible. Yeah. And, and the, what's important about this video is this idea. Um, I, I even hate the term 21 foot rule. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a rule. It, we, we call it the reactionary gap because you have to react. And like you said, if there's anything else, this cop is outside the waistband holster, easy access to the firearm. If there's anything else, if there's kids involved, if there's a coat, if there's anything, you need even more time and more space. The 21 foot rule, right? The so-called 21 foot rule, which is a bastardized term according to Lieutenant Dennis Tuller, the guy who arguably originated it, but he didn't originate that. What he either discovered or really put his finger on and put the spotlight on is the whole principle of the reactionary gap of how close is too close until an edged weapon will beat an armed officer's response draw time. Um, but we have to remember, as, as non-officers, we're drawing from concealed carry positions, so that's gonna take longer. We don't know what about the target identity. Here we have perfect target identity. We've got target isolation issues. Um, we have got the fact that if I produce a firearm and point it at somebody without having the legal privilege to do so, I can't fall back on officer safety. Um, and I'm not saying that to be critical of police officers, not one bit. I'm just saying that for the fact that the laws surrounding the use of force um, or the, the threatening use of force are gonna be very different oftentimes because we don't have all these carve outs and exceptions. Mm -hmm. um, so for what it's worth on my YouTube channel, I actually did a very deep dive on the whole principle, the origination of the so-called 21 foot rule, the reactionary gap, how these two apply and how it almost became law in a little known case called uh, Buchanan versus city of San Jose. Mm -hmm. And uh, people need to understand as well that it's not just drawing your gun you got to get on target and you've got to score enough hits to stop the threat and you've got to get offline. Um, the cop moved kind of straight backwards, but then got, you know, the, the, the assailant decided he was going to flee rather than continue to strike at the officer. If he did just pancake that officer and got on top of him with a knife, we'd have had a, a completely different situation. And how many gunshots did we hear? Oh, and no, he's still it. running. Yeah, he's, right? he's still moving down the road. And these are full size, presumably, you know, it looks like Glock 17s or something like that, maybe at smallest a 19. Mm -hmm. But I assume from a full carry position, we're probably talking about Glock 17s. Um, so, you know, your subcompact with the three inch barrel versus a five inch barrel Glock 19, you're losing a little bit of firepower depending yeah. upon what type of ammunition, what type, what type of powders that they're going to be using. Um, but we heard a lot of gunshots. Mm -hmm. before he actually went down and was no longer a threat. Yeah, and it's understandable that people will debate about how close you can let somebody get and, and at what point you're going to take steps and, and keep, keep the person at distance. And I don't want to encourage the whole world to be completely paranoid and be like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get in that bubble. Right. You know, I don't, want to, I don't want to let anyone get within 21 feet of me. But if you're, if you're starting to deal with somebody who you think might be a problem, I'm going to say immediately start looking for an exit strategy. Immediately start trying to figure a way to get out of there. Like you said, break contact. And let's just not engage with that person. Right. Change your plans for the day. And to be clear, I'm, I'm not saying that you can automatically use deadly force against an edge attacker within 21 feet. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, what's going to govern that are check your local listings, but broadly speaking, are you in reasonable fear of imminent death or great bodily harm? Mm -hmm or immediate, or depending upon what your state's permutations are, and that's, of course, before we deal with duty to retreat, castle doctrine, stand your ground, all those other kind of the normal friends that show up to these discussions. Yeah, and, and again, in this case, the knife was there on the ground. Nobody assumed he could get it that quickly and put it into action that quickly, and the truth of the matter is things happen fast. I don't think I've ever talked to anybody who's been involved in an incident where they're like, oh, yeah, I had plenty of time. That, that, that's not what people say. I hope officers use this video for training because I'm sure if they went back, two things probably crossed my mind. And as a law enforcement officer yourself, you, you grade me on how, how close I get on this. Number one, they shouldn't have stood as nearly as close. Yep. They should have stood further back. And number two, probably the first thing I'm doing is, okay, the weapon's on the ground, Sure, take 10 steps that way or yeah. something like that. And maybe he's not complying. You might find it shocking that people don't always do what we as police officers tell them. But then you can draw your firearm yeah. and at least and, you're one up now, right? And in that crowd too, um, like I said, the officer looked really relaxed. I'm right. thinking if I'm the close engagement officer right there, at least I got my taser out. 
At least I have an electronic control device because I have a lethal cover surrounding. At least that's there. And, and maybe that provides a little bit more encouragement for the guy to not reach down and grab the knife. But um, it's, I'm certainly not faulting the officers on what they did. They were the, at that situation. We have a guy with his hands clearly up. And he's at this point, he's a yes person. He's being compliant right. until he's not. And that right. um, when we're talking with private citizens about that, you never know when a bad guy is going to turn from friendly to an aggressor and, and try to take what you have. Well, in a private citizen situation, probably the number one problem is the fact that, you know, the wolf doesn't come out until yeah. it, it knows it has the upper hand. Right. Um, and here, they obviously didn't give themselves enough of a reactionary gap to respond. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that we're supposed to be cuddly with people with knives who are talking to police and so forth. Um, but this is a real life scenario of yeah. here's how that can get people killed. Yeah. And to that matter, I don't know if this guy would be alive. Maybe mm -hmm. he would be alive today. Maybe hopefully he would have learned something from this. Because if the officers say, sir, take 10 steps that way, he says no, they draw firearms, and now he's saying, eh, I'm not going to win this. Yeah. And, you know, he maybe he goes to jail, maybe he gets let go. I don't know what they're investigating him for. I don't know what the purpose of the stop is. But the point is, is that, God willing, he goes on with his life, and all these other officers do as well, um, post-incident, rather than we've got a body in the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again for your insight on all these videos, Tom. It's great to have you here. Folks, thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. I will remind you again that we have a gun giveaway going on. It's free, but it ends really soon. So click on the link in the description down below to learn which brand new gun you could win. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell. We'll let you know every time we come out with a new video. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.